So far in Inventor, you've been working with uh, different parts, uh, a clevis. You should have made up a pin, a lever, and also a key. And what we're going to do now is uh, learn how to put them together into an assembly. And we're going to have something that works like this, so that when you turn one or when you move one lever, the pin and the other lever move along with it, as well as the key. So I'm just going to get rid of that assembly. and. Uh, you can see that I've got my different parts available to me here. It's important that you've got them uh, created first. And uh, I'm just going to go and quickly uh, uh, create a new assembly file. So I'm going to go up to top, new, and I want to make sure that I'm still on English units. I'm going to select standard IAM. And what this, what this is, is a different style of, or a different type of file within Inventor. Uh, you can see that you've got your feature tree over here, similar as in parts. And we've got our ribbons, but the ribbons are different than uh, for part files. So in the assembly, we'll bring all the parts together. So the very first thing I want to do is click on place, place. And what I'm going to do is put in one of the parts. So I'm going to start off with the clevis because that's going to be the main part that everything else is going to be uh, located to. So I'm going to say open, and it shows up on my in my drawing space here. I click once, that locates it, and if I wanted to uh, enter another one, that, so in order to do that, I left-clicked with the mouse, and then now if I wanted to enter or put in another clevis, then I could left-click with the mouse again. However, I don't want another one, so I'm going to hit escape on the keyboard. Now I've got this object. If I click and drag it, I can move it all over the place. I'm going to undo the move. And really what I would like for the purposes of this is to have the clevis grounded so that it can't move and then other things will move around it. So uh, it's a good idea to think first of what would be your grounded object and then that's quite often the one that you want to put in first. You can always go back and ground it uh, other objects as well, or you could uh, make uh, an object that is grounded, not grounded, by going and selecting it in the tree. So here is my clevis. It's the only part that I've got in the assembly so far. I right-click with my mouse and go down to grounded. And now if I click and drag on it, notice that it can't move. It doesn't matter how I try to do it. It's, it's stuck. It's grounded and won't move. So the next thing I want to do is to put in another object. So I'm going to click and place. So I'm going to select another part. The next one I'm going to put in is the pin. So I'm going to say open. And again, I only want one of them. Don't bother to try to locate it close. It's actually, I find it easier to uh, locate it near the object, but not in the location that you want to uh, put it into. So I'm going to click once. And again, if I want to uh, put in another uh, pin, then I could left click again, but I don't want to. So I'm going to escape next thing I want to do is to locate the pin into the center of the, uh, clevis, of the clevis. So to do that, I'm going to use what's called constraints. They, uh, there are different ways to do this, and I'll do another tutorial video showing you how to use joints. And even within constraints, there's different ways that you could go about uh, creating the same uh, effect. However, I'm going to click once on constraint here. And I'm going to use the first type. It's called a mate. Uh, I know a lot of you will want to use insert, but let's let's work with mates first. So click on uh, mate, and notice that then it's on selection. I'm going to select what I want to mate. So here you need to start thinking about what do you want the objects? How do you want them to actually be uh, mated with one another? And so really what I want is the center of the pin to be located or mated to the center of the clevis. So notice that if I move around, I get different points on the object. And sometimes I'll need to move in to get or zoom in or zoom out and possibly rotate in order to get to the, the location that I want or to get it to find that when I'm looking for the mating properties. So I'm going to select this. This is the axis. So I just hover around until I find the axis, click on it once, and then I'm going to go and find the axis of the hole. And so I'm going to click on that as well. And notice that it moves it into place. It shows me what it's going to look like. And so 
I'm going to now, since that is correct, I'm going to apply it. I could have also put in an offset if I wanted to offset it a certain distance away from the uh, offset the, the centers by a certain distance, but I didn't want to. So now I'm just going to close this window just to show you. Now when I move this, notice that it will only move on the axis of the whole of the clevis. So that's perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. I'm going to undo, and now I've got my keyway back up at the top again. So uh, if you haven't got that, then you want to get this located right up at the top using a, a mate to uh, locate it uh, with a plane. Uh, I'll show you something similar in a few minutes, and hopefully you'll be able to go back and do that later. So now the next thing I want to do is to line these up so that the centers are uh, mated. So I'm just going to pull this out further that way. Uh, it will be uh, easier to see. So I'm going to drag this straight out. And actually, I'm going to end up rotating it, so I'll, I'll do that just in case yours is not rotated the same way, and then I'll, I'll show you how to align that straight up and down or whichever direction you want it. So it's a little bit different than we did in AutoCAD. So now what I want to do is I want to mate the, the middle plane of the pin to the middle plane of the uh, clevis. So I know that I have actually already got a mid plane. So if I click on the pin over in the wheel, in the uh, in the tree, click on the origin, I can click. Uh, I could use the X Y plane, which is right in the middle of the pin, and so I could use that to mate to. I'm going to click on the clevis, and click on the origin, and the X Y plane there is right in the middle of the clevis as well. So those two, if I meet, meet those two together, then the pin will be exactly centered in the clevis hole. However, if by chance you didn't uh, make your extrusion as a symmetric extrusion, then you may want to go back and do that. So I could go to the pin right now. And uh, when I first did my extrusion, it was extrusion one over in the tree here. I, If I uh, click on it, right click, and say edit feature, notice that mine was set up so that it was a symmetric uh, extrusion, so that it went six inches in either direction. Had you had it been like this, then, uh, then you may want to go and change yours to be symmetric. Even if you have yours like this, you could always work with it. I can say okay. just going to say accept for the moment because I'm going to end up undoing what I'm doing. So right now, my extrusion starts at this end. So, and I don't have a plane in the middle of the object. So if I want a plane in the middle, then I can create what's called a work plane. So if I just click on this area up here in the ribbon, select surface, select the opposite surface, notice that it creates this plane in between them. So now I've got a work plane and it shows up right here. It's not in the uh, origin anymore. My XY plane is at the back. However, I've got this work plane that I can also make use of, and that'll stay with the, uh, with the object, and I'll be able to see that in the assembly. So I could hit save, and then that will show up there. But I'm gonna do undo and get this back to uh, the way it had been, okay? So uh, I've got my pin uh, here again. I've already got an origin, so hopefully an origin XY plane. Hopefully you've got that. Otherwise, go and make that. I'm going to click on the plane. I'd like to do that first if I can select one first and then go into constrain. However, it's not necessary. It just means that now it's selected that one already for me. Now I can go over into the tree and select the XY plane of the clevis. So I'm clicking on the XY plane. I notice that it shows me what's going to happen. Those two now are mated together. Now I can say apply. If I wanted to offset for some reason, maybe I don't want it to be exactly lined up and I wanted to offset, I could put that in, in, in this location. So then I can say apply. And now I've got these mated. Okay. So now if I try to move it, notice that no matter what I do with the mouse, the only thing it can do is spin around and around because I've located it, I've locked it from being able to uh, move on the z-axis and I had previously set it up so that the centers are locked together. So the only thing that's left that it can possibly do is rotate about 
the z-axis. I can't do anything else. So that's one degree of freedom left. So now to get this uh, not straight up, it's not ab an absolute necessity, but I, I like to do that. I find the rest of it uh, comes together, together easier. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create another mate. So I'm going to go to here to mate. This time I'm going to use an angular mate. Click on angle and I'm going to select, I'm going to zoom in, I'm going to select something like this surface here, part of the key. And then I want to make this a, a two angle one, not one of these three ones. Uh, then the next thing I want to do is select something that uh, if I put a zero degree angle mate, then it will pop this straight up. So I could actually just go, I could use anything. I could use the edge surface here, that would work. I could, I more often use the planes. So uh, the X, Y plane isn't gonna work. The uh, X, Z isn't gonna work, but the Y, Z would work. So if I click on the Y, Z plane, now notice that uh, now my notch is straight up and down. So I can say apply and what was that? The offset would have been actually an angle. I could have set it at a certain angle if I had want, if I had wanted it to be say 45 degrees around. Uh, now I've got this straight up and down. I'm not going to want that to stay that way because now if I try to move this, notice I can't. Nothing's going to move, right? It won't rotate anymore because I've locked this edge to the uh, XZ plane. So what I'm going to do is go back in the tree and look for that mate that I just made. So I made that mate. Uh, on the pin. So I look in the pin set, uh, section here in the tree and there's my angle mate. I, it, it's done what I wanted it to do. I don't want it anymore. So I'm going to right click on it and oh just to show you um, just before I do delete it. Notice that I've got this angle mate here and we set the zero degree uh, uh, setting when when we created that constraint. The nice thing is, if I want to change that, I can change that without having to go in and edit it. I can just ch click down here and change that. Maybe I want that to be 90 degrees and hit enter. And now notice that I've got a 90 degree made in there. Or if I had wanted it to be 45 degrees, I could have done that as well. So I'm going to make it zero. Get it back to where it was. And then I don't want this made anymore. So I'm going to right click on it in the tree and I'm going to say delete. It doesn't change its location. It just uh, it just gets rid of that mate. Now, if I was to go and spin this around or to move it, it will spin for me. I'm going to undo the spin so that I've got that straight up and down. Notice I've also got this mate. The same idea where we lo located the the centers. If I had wanted an offset, I could go down in this area and change the uh, the offset distance. So maybe I wanted that to be uh, two inches. I could put that in and now it offsets it that way. I'm going to set it back to zero. And now, uh, now I've got the pin located the way I want. So the next thing I'm going to put in is the keyway. So I'm going to click on place again. Sorry, just the key. I'm going to put in the key and say open. And I'm going to uh, locate it once and I'm not going to want two of them. So I'm going to locate it a second time. Now what I want to do is I want uh, uh, this key to sit directly in here. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, let's first mate, say, this edge with the vertical edge in here. So I'm going to do a mate. Again, there's other ways to do this. You will find faster ways, but uh, I just want you to understand first the basics of how to set things up using basic mates. So, so now, now we've got the keyway locked edge to edge. Okay, so I'm going to apply that one. I don't need to go out of this window. I'm going to need to do some more mates, so I don't need to keep opening and closing that one. Uh, now, I also want to uh, uh, make it so the pin, is, the, the face, the inside face, is mated to the inside face of the slot here. So uh, actually, I will close this, and I'll see if I can drag this out now, and I can, all right? So uh, I'm going to do something like that, and I'm going to now uh, do a mate again. 
uh, and I'll spin it around enough that I can see. So I want this face to be mated to this face. Okay. And I also want the bottom to be mated. So I'm going to apply that one. And I may need to temporarily uh, uh, turn off the visibility of the pin. So actually, I should be able to still probably drag this. I'm going to close this. And I should be able to drag this up. So sometimes you actually want to make it so that you can get to things easier. So I'm just going to drag it out. And now I'll be able to see the bottoms. So I'm going to do another mate. I'm going to click on this bottom surface. And I'm going to rotate this around. Oops. Rotate around. And I want that one. And now, if I take a look at this thing, if I apply that, looks like we've got this perfectly set into uh, into the keyway. So now I can close this one, close the mating window and or the constraints window. And now notice that if I drag this keyway, because it's locked into the uh, into the pin, it's going to it's going to force the pin to be uh, rotated. So I drag that and notice that I get exactly what I would want it, as if I had wedged in a very tight key here. Also, if I drag, if I move the uh, uh, the pin, then the keyway moves along with it. So I've gotten the motion that I want. I'm going to undo and put that back to where it was. And now the next thing for us to do is to go ahead and put in the uh, the lever. So I'm going to place in the lever. I open and I'll put in one and I'm going to need another one. So I'll put that in as well. And then I can escape. Now I'm going to go through a very similar uh, process. I'm going to constrain. I'm going to want to look, I'm going to want to have the centers line up. So center of the pin with the center of the, uh, the center of the pin with the center of the hole in the lever. Uh, that does that one. I'm going to apply it. And then I'm also going to want to uh, make it so that I think what I'll do here, you, you could do how you would like, but uh, I'm going to, I think I'd like this face of the pin to be flush with the face of the, uh, of the lever. So I'm going to do another mate. I'm going to select the face of the lever and the face of the pen. Uh, now notice that it's kind of gone opposite of what I want. So I want to do, I want to play around with these. So that's now about what it is. So that they're flush rather than uh, face to face. And so again, every now and again, you need to, to check out some of these other uh, options that are in here. So again, it, it just decides whether or not it's going to be uh, face to face or flush. Okay. And now I've got this thing located. Uh, however, if I try to turn this, so I'm going to apply this. If I try to turn the, the uh, pin, notice that it will allow it to, pin, to, to spin, but the, nothing's going to move the lever arm as yet because we haven't done anything with our mates in order for that to happen. So I've got this back to where it was. Now what I'm going to do is I've got to put in some sort of a mate between the, the key and the uh, and the arm. So uh, it actually would have been easier if I had not uh, done the mate to uh, face to face as yet. So I'm actually going to suppress that for a minute. So for my lever, I'm going to go down to lever one in the menu in the in the tree over here. You really got to get used to using this tree for uh, uh, for working through things. So. I find that this is lever one, and if I'm not sure, I can click on it, and it's the one that gets highlighted. Or the same as when I hover over it here in the tree, I can see which one it is. Since I've got two levers, I may not be sure which one is which. So uh, now I've got my lever one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to suppress this flush mate. 
That doesn't mean I'm actually deleting it. I could delete it if I wanted to and redo it, but I can actually just suppress it. That means it's as if it's not there for now, but later on, if I unsuppress it, that mate is back in. So now I'm going to allow this to drag off to, off to the side here. Because what I want to do is I want to get this surface and the edge of the key mated. So I'm going to go up to Constraint. I'm going to move in here a little bit closer, and I'm going to take that edge. And then I'm going to go back, and I'm going to spin this around until I can see the corresponding edge on the, uh, on the key. And that's the one that I want right there. Now those are uh, uh, mated. So I'm going to say apply, and I'm going to go back to my view. And then I'm going to go back to my flush mate, and I'm going to unsuppress it. Now that slides in. So what we've done now is made it so that uh, the edge of the uh, key is mated to the uh, edge of the slot in the uh, lever. So now watch what happens. Now if I move the lever, everything moves together. Okay, or if I was to move the pin, it would all move together because I've put in enough constraints that one thing moves the next and moves the next and so on. I'm just going to undo the moves. And that is really how you would go about uh, setting this all up. Now you could go through and do the exact same thing on the other side and uh, you'll have everything made it. In fact, we could actually probably go through and do a mirror on it. If I do a mirror on, uh, on the uh, key and the lever, and now uh, I'm going to want to use a, the mate pane, reuse standard content. So what we're going to do now is select a mirror plane, and for the mirror plane, what I'm going to use is the mid of the pin. So I'm going to slide this window over. I'm going to go to the pin or the mid of the uh, of the clevis, but I'd rather use the pin since I know it's always going to the pin. If I was to ever go and change dimensions on the uh, on the clevis, uh, I know that I'm always going to want this to be mirrored about. The, the mid of the pin. And so now I can say uh, next. And it's going to put in two new parts for me, and these are going to be the names. So we could change the names if we wanted to. And now we can say OK. And now we've got those located. What we won't have, though, I don't believe, is the mates. So we would have to go back through. Now if I grab this one, notice that the mates are not have not been provided. So I would have to actually go through and mate these parts. So I think it would have been just as easy to go ahead and put in these two parts and mate them uh, as I did on the first first one. I'll just undo. And I'm going to undo again. And I'll go back to here. And so now what I would like you to do is to finish off uh, using, putting in the key and putting in the uh, other lever arm and finish this all up such that you can now drive one versus the other. Actually, I'll show you one more thing. We do eventually want to create an animation of this. So what you'll do is uh, we're going to create an angle mate for, uh, I'm going to use the lever arm as my driver. So I'm going to go to here uh, and I'm going to use this time an angle mate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a surface that would make sense. So I'm going to say this surface and I'm going to use the two angle, not the three. And then what I'm going to do is select some other surface. I could use uh, this one again, or in this case, I'm going to get, uh, use the uh, origin. So it's going to be the YZ plane. And now I've got an angle of zero degrees to begin with for, or I've got an angle mate that says this is going to be lined up at zero degrees. Now if I say apply, now what I can do is close out of the, the constraint window. I'm going to go to lever one, and I'm going to take a look at that. And here's my angle, my angle constraint. Again, I could go and change the angle if I wanted to, but in order to animate it, 
what I do is I right click on the angle constraint and I say drive. That opens up an animation window. So now I can go through and I can say start. I want the end to be, let's just make it say 720 degrees. I can make it whatever I want. And now I can play this and there it goes. It's going around 720 degrees. It's going around on the, the second turn, which will bring it up to 720 degrees, and it stops. And then I could do it in reverse. And I'll just stop it, and I'll set it back to its beginning again. And if I wanted to, I could change this. So let's just make it 360 degrees now. And there's other options I can put in here. I can go down through and change the number of steps, uh, whether it does start end or start end start, uh, how it repeats and how many repetitions and so on. And so right now I'm just going to animate it once here. So what I do is I click on the record button. Notice that the check mark says minimize dialogue during recording. If I had any planes on, any work planes, I might want to first go to the view window and change the object visibility and turn off any work planes or anything else that I that is in this list that I don't want to have shown up showing up in the uh, in the animation. But now I can animate this. So I uh, click on the record button. It's going to ask me for a, a location. So I would go and find my uh, my uh, folder and I would give this a name. So maybe I would call it lever drive animation or something along that lines. Leave it as a WMB file. Don't, don't change any of those settings. And then once we do save, then you'll be able to uh, click the play button. And then it will, I'll, here I'll just do it once here. Again, I would go and find the location for it here, but I'm going to say save. And don't bother to change any of these for now. We'll say OK. And then I hit. I need to hit play. And when it's done, you'll now be able to go and find that file and double click on it and you'll be able to play the animation on its own. So uh, hopefully you'll be able to step through this uh, tutorial all right. And uh, again, I'll put another tutorial in that will show you another way to go about uh, more quickly uh, meeting these parts and not using the, uh, the keyway, okay?